guys so today I'm going to share with you how you can retain moisture in your natural hair I'm going to share some of my tips that has helped me and hopefully they can help you so immediately after I went natural I noticed that my hair felt so dry and I couldn't understand for the life of me why it was so dry I would do everything I would shampoo it condition it deep condition it shampoo it again and it just wasn't working um I realized eventually that I was shampooing my hair too much so the first thing I would like to discuss is over shampooing shampooing is okay if you like to shampoo your hair there isn't anything wrong with shampooing your hair however over shampooing your hair too much can equate to dry hair and even over cleansing your hair if you co-washing your hair too much it can make your hair dry and that has happened to me but definitely shampoo because shampoo regular shampoo has a lot of drying ingredients in it such as sulfates and you guys hear that a lot when you first go natural so I would suggest a sulfate free shampoo and even if you use a sulfate free shampoo I will also suggest maybe doing it once a month or twice a month doing this will make it a lot easier for you to you know retain the moisture without drying it out so much because sulfate free shampoos are gentle on the hair and scalp and it'll help remove the dirt however it's still shampoo and I may be a little biased because I'm not a shampooer but you know in the past the shampooing your hair it makes your hair feel funny it makes your hair feel stripped sometimes um, if you have color in your hair it can fade the color faster it's a lot of things that comes with using shampoo so I would suggest limit the use of shampooing also if you like to co-wash and your hair still feel dry you're probably co-washing too much I had an experience during my TWA phase when I figured out co-washing after I got over the fact that it was the weirdest thing in the world um, that my hair was still feeling really dry and I couldn't understand why it still feels dry and that's because I was co-washing my hair every day I had a TWA which is a teeny weeny afro but I would co-wash my hair every day like I was supposed to co-wash it every day not understanding that you're co-washing but you're removing it's like shampoo except it's not as strong as shampoo um, and it made my scalp really dry and it was getting inflamed it just wasn't a good deal and I understood quickly that that's not my thing to do so you have to tweak your regimen and understand what works for you but over cleansing your hair can be one of the culprits to your hair feeling so dry all the time the next thing I would like to discuss are your products sometimes using certain products can cause your hair to be dry now I do not use silicones in my products and if they do have silicones they're silicones that are water soluble meaning that I can co-wash them out easily without using shampoo or they can just rinse out of my hair after I get in a shower and in the past I try every product you know you're natural for the first time you're gonna go off you're excited you want to see which product works make your curl pop or make your twist out pop or whatever for your hair and I did just that I was using some of the same products that I use when my hair was relaxed I remember using my Cara care stuff my firm stuff you know like the shampoos the conditioners the deep conditioner that used to be amazing on my relaxed hair I forgot the name of it but it was awesome but it wasn't working for me with the natural hair my hair still felt dry um, I was using Neutrogena triple moisture I loved it for my relaxed hair natural hair no way uh, it was full of silicones and I don't want to down silicones but they didn't work for me now if they work for you please by all means continue to use it and do what works for you but I'm saying some um, products what can happen is they can build up on your hair and your hair may feel dry and let's say you're using silicones and you use them all the time and it's building up on your hair and you're using shea butter and using oil and using all these different products and you're just co-washing co-washing may not be enough to remove this stuff so at this point it may be useful to use a shampoo to reset your hair to get everything out or apple cider vinegar or some type of natural cleanser that's stronger than co-washing to remove the buildup so certain products can create buildup which can lead to dryness because it's blocking out the moisture silicones have a place like if you're flat ironing your hair and you need something to help with blowing your hair out and you know to help protect against the heat and the crazy thing is now which is not really crazy but it's amazing that there are products on the market now that are silicone free and they're aimed for flat ironing your hair so you know 
you have to think about the products you're using. Also, understand that if you're using too many products at one time, that can be a problem too. I used to use like four different products in my hair at one time and I couldn't understand again, why it's dry again? You know, I go back to the phase, I'm doing good, all of a sudden it gets dry again. Using a lot of products at one time can also cause buildup and you don't even know it. Now, some people can successfully do this and their hair feels amazing. So kudos to you guys, but for me, it wasn't working using too many products at one time. At the most, I will use two products in my hair. Um, like my base will always be some type of conditioner and then it'll be a styler or a gel or something. And I started doing this because with me, when I was using too many products, I didn't know which product was causing my hair to be dry, if that makes any sense. So let's say you're using, you know, your favorite conditioner and then you use a leave-in conditioner on top of that conditioner and then you turn around and use a gel and you use shea butter and you're using an oil, you do not know what's going on. So if you are doing this and you think you have dry hair because of this, what I would suggest doing is eliminating a couple products. Let's say eliminate one first and see if your hair still feel dry. If it still feel dry, maybe eliminate another product. And then if it's feel a little better, you know, gauge it off of that and move forward. Sometimes that can be the issue using too many products at one time as well and using products heavy with silicones and things that can build up on your hair. So if you do like to use silicones, it is best that you cleanse your hair at least once a month, twice a month with something pretty strong to remove it if you feel like you're getting build up. Now, I know some people that use silicones and they do not have any issues with their hair being dry and that is amazing. So again, do what works for you, but I'm sharing what works for me. So again, using too many products can be another issue. Your ingredients in your products can also be an issue if you're using you know, the wrong ingredients. And I know it can be very overwhelming and confusing and annoying when you first go natural and you're trying to figure out why I have to learn this stuff. If you're trying to avoid silicones, I do feel that it's important that you get familiar with it. I know it sounds weird, but eventually it's gonna become so easy for you, you're gonna be able to spot them like that. And when you, you know, get a product and you go to the store and you skim it over and you read the ingredient list, like, okay, I don't wanna put that in my hair because it didn't work well for me last time. So I would suggest going to websites like naturallycurly.com but just using Google. There are plenty of blogs out that have ingredients to avoid, silicones to avoid in your hair products and give it a shot and see if it works for you. One of the main things that can help you with retaining moisture in your hair is properly moisturizing your hair with plain water. Now, I do not mean, you know, just spray water on your hair and then let it go. You can do that too if you wanna reactivate your product the next day. But, you know, co-washing your hair or just wetting your hair throughout the week at least once a week or twice a week. I have noticed for me, if I go too long without co-washing my hair, it's a tangled, matted, dull, dry mess and it doesn't look good. It may look good to you, but trust me, I know when my hair is feeling dry and it's not responding well and it's probably because it's dehydrated. So keeping your hair hydrated is very important. You do not want to co-wash. You do not have to co-wash when you get in the shower. But if you feel like your hair needs to be rinsed, do it. I rinse my hair all the time. Rinse it, let the water sit, condition it, rinse the conditioner back out, and style your hair. You do not necessarily have to co-wash your hair every time you get in the shower. Doing this helps put more moisture back in your hair, and it's just absolutely great for your hair. So the next thing is your nighttime hair. Everyone forgets about that. So it's very important that you have a satin pillowcase or a satin bonnet or a scarf or something protecting your hair. It doesn't stop when you go natural. When you go natural, you still need to protect your hair at night because the cotton from the pillowcases can draw all the moisture out of your hair. You know, cotton is great for the summertime and keeping you dry and things like that. Well, it does the same thing with your hair when it's, you know, you're sleeping on it at night. So sleeping on a satin pillowcase is amazing and it protects your hair even if you have a TWA. I used to put on my little satin bonnet and sleep on it and wake up in the morning and refresh my hair. It would keep your hair nice and soft and it would keep all the natural oils in your hair and it'll just, you know, just protect your hair. So definitely protect your hair at night. That's very important as well. Now here is one I feel is more of my opinion but I, I, I have noticed a big difference and it's called playing in your hair too much. Now, I had the hand and fro syndrome when I first went natural. I just wanted to touch my hair all the time. I couldn't stop. It was really bad. Like, I literally couldn't stop 
fill in my hair because I'm like, first I'm natural, my hair is short and I have a teeny weeny afro and I don't have all my hair anymore. And also it just feels really good to just play in your natural hair. Um, I noticed when I did that, I would get more frizz because you're disturbing the curl now and my hair will be dry. It will get very, very dry. And if you think about it, when you touch your hair, you have product in your hair. What you get? You get oil like on your fingers. You're pulling out the natural oils and the product in your hair and the oils and everything that's in it, basically, what I'm trying to say. So you're removing the moisture out of your hair and you don't even know it because it's causing friction and you're just basically disturbing the curl pattern and you're just making it dry. And I made my hair extremely dry doing this as well. I just used to do this all day when my hair was short, just run my hands through my hair and just rub it. And it was a habit. It was a really bad habit to a point where I had to like put something in my hands and stick my hands in my pockets or keep myself occupied so I wouldn't touch my hair because that was also leading to dry hair. And you have to realize when you're going natural for the first time, you may think, oh my gosh, my hair used to feel so sleek and soft when it was relaxed and it felt amazing, it felt like silk. And now it doesn't feel that way. Well, it's because you have curly hair. Curly hair isn't going to feel like straight hair because, you know, it's curly. It's, it's you know, it has dimension and it. it's different. So think about that too. So do not expect it to feel exactly like straight hair. Now, for me, when I know my hair is really moisturized, it feels really soft, like cotton, uh, it's really fluffy. It just feels great. So when I squeeze it, I get give. It gives right back. It, you know, does this. I can't even say it right now. It like bounce back. It just, it's squishy. I think that makes sense. Um, so really think about those things. That has helped me big time. Also, staying away from heat. If you blowing out your hair a lot, you know, that can lead to dry hair when you're trying to wear it curly and your hair may look limp and it may not look well and you're wondering why your hair isn't shiny. That heat. No, you want to limit the use of the heat in your hair. It's okay to blow your hair out. I do it from time to time, but doing it all the time can possibly lead to heat damage and it can also lead to your hair being drier than usual because of all the direct heat that you're putting on it and you're messing up the bond of your hair and you know all that good stuff so avoid using heat because that can also lead to dry hair also limit the time you use extremely hot water on your hair because that can be very drying as well because what's happening is when you put hot water on your hair it's opening the cuticle and it's just letting all the moisture out and everything after you just did all that work to get it nice and soft so using warm water is great cold water is even better cold water is amazing for natural hair it just seals the cuticle but it sucks because it's super cold and who wants to take a cold water shower i don't and again like i was stating before i have hard water so that can also be a factor in why your hair feels drier than usual now there are hard water filters that you can get from like lowe's and i'm definitely aware of those so Definitely look into those. They're very inexpensive. I think they're about like $20. They're ranging in prices. If you Google it or you just go to the hardware store and ask someone about them. And they're really, really easy to install and that can help too. Using too much protein can also make your hair feel dry. The protein, you know, it's in a lot of things. In gels, some hair products such as conditioners, shampoos. So you want to limit the use of protein. I'm not the type to really focus on moisture protein balance. Maybe I should, but I really just focus more so on moisture. I was always taught protein is only needed, like, you know, really strong protein treatments are only needed when, you know, you do something drastic to your hair and you feel like your hair is breaking off and it's feeling really weak. Um, you should use protein. And when you use protein, you should always follow up with a moisturizing conditioner. And cold weather. I know that it's cold right now where some of you guys live. That can make your hair feel really dry. Your altitude. I used to live in Colorado, so it's a high altitude area. Um, that can definitely make your hair feel dry. What I used to do and what I like to do when I'm in the cold weather or in a high altitude, I would style my hair with deep conditioner. You can do that. A moisturizing deep conditioner and style your hair with it, you would be fine. It would not mess up your hair. Your hair would not fall out. And it really helped with adding moisture to my hair. Some people like to seal. I'm not a person to seal because my hair gets weighed down really easily. So I avoid sealing with oil. I like to use it before I co-wash now. 
but sealing with oil, I don't do that. But if you would like to seal with oil, that can also help you as well. But, um, you know, cold air can be dry into your hair, but using something like a nice deep conditioner is great for keeping your hair moisturized in the winter months and just retaining a lot of moisture and just nourishing your hair. Over processing your hair. So if you're coloring your hair too much, that can also lead to dry natural hair, even if you're natural, because your hair is gonna be more porous and you keep adding chemicals such as hair color and things like that to your hair. It can make your hair really weak and it can feel really dry and it may not be retaining moisture. So if you do color your hair, always deep condition your hair for at least a month every week. What that's gonna do is rebuild the moisture in your hair and ensure that it doesn't dry out. So definitely think about that if you like to color your hair. And like I stated before, I do not seal my hair, but sealing your hair with oil is also great. So an easy way to seal your hair, all you have to do is basically wet it, style it, add your conditioner of choice, and get an oil of your choice. It can be olive oil or coconut oil, any type of oil that you like. Um, and basically put it on your hair after you have applied your style or your conditioner. Basically what this is going to do is help, you know, keep the moisture in your hair and like form a barrier. It's really great for women with super, super dry hair. So you can definitely try doing that as well. So basically that is it. That's what helps me. I hope this video has helped you and I gave you guys a few tips. Um, please let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment below and let me know what you like to do to preserve the moisture in your hair. I would love to see what you have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all have a great week. Bye.